Hi everyone, I'm Nishi, uh, this is Sne, and today we are recording a video talking about the uh, Masters in Information Experience Design program at Pratt Institute in New York. Uh, both of us uh, went through the program, Sne will be graduating in May, I have just recently graduated from it, and uh, we were both kind of looking for a review of the program before we joined, so we thought we would record something for prospective students, just so you guys uh, get a sense of what you're getting into. So yeah, to give a quick introduction of the program itself, as it says, it's a information experience design degree, which is very similar to an HCI degree. So if you're looking for something in that field, this is very much um, in your like purview and you should definitely consider this. Um, and yeah, I would let Sne talk about some of the application process uh, involved for, for the program. Yeah, uh, so the application process is pretty much what you would expect from any other master's program. So it's your standard essay, statement of purpose that you write down. Uh, with HCI, uh, you would definitely see like some universities have a mandatory portfolio requirement, some don't. Pratt, uh, in fact, doesn't have a mandatory portfolio requirement. So it's very much standard. Uh, and also, uh, Pratt also doesn't have a GRE requirement as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that is how the application process goes. Uh, and from there, let's move into the meat of it, the program. Yeah. So I'm personally a UX designer and I had been working for over three years back in India before I decided to get my master's degree. What I was looking for in this particular program was a way to upskill myself. I really wanted to get into UX research a lot more. So that's why I decided to pursue this particular degree. Um, what's good about the program is that it lets you customize your courses. It lets you pick what you want to learn based on your preferences. There are primarily two tracks that you can essentially go into, either design or research, based on your background, your interests, things like that. So I took courses like accessibility, um, practical ethnography for UX, advanced usability. All of these gave me um, research techniques that can be applicable both as a designer and also as a researcher. So that's what I uh, got the most out of from this degree. And Sne also had a a uh, different vision when she came into the program yeah. so she'll talk about that yeah so i kind of came into the program i worked uh, for about nine years before i decided to do my masters and uh, before that i'd also kind of uh, run two startups for about six years and my essence of coming into the program was i've always been a product builder who has had sort of a design thinking, which has been intuitive. And I wanted those tools to kind of take that back into the process of product building and be a design first founder, so to say. Uh, and that was essentially, essentially why I decided Pratt, because I also knew that Pratt had this thing wherein you could knit your entire story of how you want to approach this profession. Uh, for me, the courses that I took was uh, very different like there were coding courses as well like i took programming user interfaces where i went into javascript uh, i took data visualizations which, which was about more about how i would like to see data and dashboards but then again getting into the core of design there was design systems which i really enjoyed and also speculative design was completely tangential wherein it was like creative space how do you kind of imagine problems in the future and how would you solve for it so i kind of knitted in that sense wherein I was like, hey, I need these different tools, but also I need the fundamentals of research, which is like usability uh, and principles around that. So yeah, I think that's the beauty about the program at Pratt, wherein you can knit it as per whatever you want to do with it. Yeah, yeah. And in terms of what you can expect when you're doing these courses, the kind of projects you will do, um, a lot of the projects will be group projects because essentially they want to simulate an environment where you're working in a team. So you have to work with different stakeholders. Um, sometimes you might work with clients. Sometimes it's just an internal project that you're working on. Um, some of the uh, exciting projects that I worked on were client projects. I worked on an eye tracking study for the Met Museum. We looked at their collections page, their search experience, and we did an entire eye tracking study on it. And I learned a lot from being in a team working on that project as well as looking at something like a museum's website and how we can design um, the UX for that. So that was some that was one of the highlights of my um, time here. And 
um what about you i think for me again like it was a lot to do with the methodology taught for example again i would definitely concur on the eye tracking part of it because it was like you don't get to see uh, user research and you don't get to see like eye tracking specifically being yes. used in the industry because it is essentially expensive but it does definitely help to understand the concepts underlying that entire process and methodology or anything from like something is basic and mandatory that we have at the university like information architecture where you're doing yeah. card sorting and all of that yeah it kind of helps you process like how do you build a product how do you get right. into the core of a user so it was definitely the methodologies uh, and the tools that i've learned which have been a highlight and again design systems is something that i've thoroughly thoroughly loved because it's very much close to what's happening in the industry today it helps you kind of approach a uh, product from a systems thinking perspective so yeah. you look at granular things and put elements together and you're like hey this is what is something that's repeatable and we don't reinvent the wheel yeah. and we build a system around it so that was really interesting for me yeah yeah it's like big picture but building small yeah. things yeah. to make the big picture come together yeah yeah, yeah. and outside of classwork we also have some other projects that keep on happening on campus so uh we both participated in something called the Amazon Music Design Challenge last year where we were given like a prompt from Amazon Music and we put together our teams and kind of pitched some new ideas to Amazon Music which was very exciting it's happening again this year and we will show you a team that's working on it right now and we will also do like a short campus tour so you guys can see what it's like being here and being a part of the program and i would say uh, for um the people who are considering this don't worry if you are like a complete beginner or you don't have a lot of background in design they have very good foundational courses which will help you build um your um like basics really well and then you can move on from there to to more advanced concepts and courses so yeah yeah for sure like i feel i think i kind of missed mentioning this but i come from an engineering background and uh, i haven't like done anything formally in the field of design or like ui ux so things like information architecture things like usability are definitely something that are taught to everyone who comes into the program so yeah happy to move around and show the campus and yeah. the amazon music participants yeah and work. good luck to everyone who is considering applying here yeah <laughs> So this is one of the labs that we have here. There is computers for everyone to work on. That's where the professor will be teaching. The projector is over there. This is Sne, who you just saw. Uh, the School of Information is primarily on the sixth floor. This is the hallway. This is like some of the students' work. and we can go in and see some some students working on the Amazon Music Challenge. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> see you. This is just a common area for people to hang out before and after classes, eat their meals, do some work, things like that. This is another classroom. Uh, again, here is the projector. This is where all the students will be. There's some more computers. And fun fact: you can see the Manhattan skyline and the Empire State Building from here. So it's a nice view if you have an evening class.